Hello, sewing friends. Welcome, welcome to another So Tell Me, Let's Go Sew live show. If you enjoy seeing the creativity of those uh, fellow crafting and sewing enthusiasts, I know you're going to be inspired tonight by my guest. So welcome. This is Let's Go Sew with Joanne Banco, where sewing enthusiasts gather to learn more about their machines. So happy to have everybody with you, with everybody. I'm happy to have all of you with me here tonight. <laughs> Getting a little tongue tied. I had an earlier conversation today and um, I was totally tongue twisted and had to untwist my tongue before I could make any more conversation. But wow, I see lots of friends here tonight. So welcome, welcome. I, I don't know why it seems like it's been longer since I did the last show when actually it's been a little bit shorter. So we're doing this show one week earlier uh, this month. Normally we do this on the fourth Monday of every month, but I'm just so happy to have everybody here. So let me um, take a minute to say hi to a few friends. I see Bambi Lynn is here, Rhonda, uh, Star Raymond, always glad to have you here. Uh, June, June is always a faithful friend here. I see DS has says hello. Heather Banks. Hey, Heather. Wow. It is such a privilege to have you joining us tonight. Uh, many of you know Heather. She is a brother educator and is um, frequently on live shows. So hi, Heather. Great to have you here. And Christy's here. Uh, Shirley's here. Trisha. Designs by Christina. So that's got to be got to be my friend Christina here. Uh, Birdie's here, uh, So Francie, Audrey, Kathy, Carolyn, and Gay is here. Wow. Gay, it's been a while since I've seen you, so it's really good to have you here too. And I'm sure there's going to be more of you popping in. I see Clovis is here, and Marie, and Linda, and Jill, Roberta, Sharon, um, Ann, another Linda. Wow. It is just, I'm just so thrilled to have everybody here tonight. So now that we've got all of the um, entry hellos started, um, I want to get right into telling you a little bit about my guest tonight. So I'm going to bring up um, a picture so that you can see her while I talk a little bit about her. So there's my friend, Francesca Yu Ling Morella, and she is the owner of the Quirky Zipper. Now, is that a cool name or what? Just give me a, a you know, a yes, yes in the chat if you think that is just one of the most fun names you have ever heard of for some type of sewing related business. I just absolutely love it. But Francesca is the owner of the Quirky Zipper, and her business offers unique bags for what she likes to call the child at heart. And, you know, Francesca has a lot of cre creativity she can offer um, to her clients. She has a love and a passion for both the performing arts as well as handcrafted fine arts. She is currently an acting major at the University of Arts in Philadelphia. And after high school, she graduated from the uh, Hunterdon County Polytech for commercial arts, where she tells me she honed her craft and started her business. So I know you are going to leave this show inspired by Francesca and amazed at her quirky zipper creation. So let me bring in Francesca so you can all say hello. Hello. Hello, Francesca. Otherwise hello, Joanne. Known otherwise known as Chessie. She tells me Chessie. I can call her Chessie. <laughs> Chessie's a good, Chessie's a good choice. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And you could, um, you could see from her surroundings that Chessie is a stitcher. So wow, <laughs> that is um, really fun to see your creative space. I know you're um, kind of new in your environment where you're at now. Um, yes getting started in school and, and all that, but um, you certainly have got a lot of training in things that we would put under that creative umbrella, um, whether it's, you know, performing or um, stitching up something wonderful. You have done just about um, all of those things in a very creative, creative way. So um, 
why don't you say a little bit about how the Quirky Zipper um, got started? I would love to. Um, so uh, as you mentioned earlier, I graduated uh, from Polytech uh, with commercial arts um, in 2020. And uh, while I was at, while I was in that program, uh, they taught us a lot of traditional art. We started with like traditional painting, acrylic, watercolor, and um, we went through and did like drawing and all sorts of things. And eventually uh, they started turning the lessons into how we can profit off of those things as artists, how we can basically the way my teacher loved to describe it, by the way, love Miss Teresa Diaz, the most amazing art teacher I've ever had in my entire we'll give life. Give her a so thumbs up. Hard. Maybe she's so, <laughs> so many thumbs up. Yes. <laughs> um, she the way she liked to explain it was this class is how to not become a starving artist. So um, what we did at the very end of my senior year was a program called Bridging the Gap where uh, she brought in clients, people who wanted logos designed um, or they wanted uh, websites redone, like things like that, things like, you know, the creative things that they don't really do. They handle the business and they bring in other people to do the art. And uh, they had us like work with clients. And for that, we designed our own businesses with our own websites. Um, I chose to make my business the quirky zipper because I knew I wanted uh, the business to be focused around all things unique, all things special, all things niche. And from there, I uh, turned it into bags and the rest, and the rest is, is history. history. <laughs> yes. Well, we're getting a, a, a few um, comments in here and I'd love to hear from uh, our friends that are, that are watching. How many of, of you out there were inspired by a teacher somewhere in your life that you know, prompted you to do something. Maybe it wasn't start a business. Maybe it was whatever, you know, um, but I would love to hear some of those stories. I certainly was inspired by my uh, home economics teacher who recommended me for my first um, first job, first real job. And it ended up being um, something sewing related. And it just got me on the start that never stopped. So um, oh, that's lovely. definitely when you have a, a teacher in your life that was meaningful for you. You um, you carry that with you for sure. So oh, yeah, kudos yep. to those to those good teachers. But we got a lot lot more friends popping in here too. I'm going to say hi to just a just a few. Oh, how lovely! Uh, Cheryl is here. Sheila's here. Inga's here. Uh, Kathy, Teresa. Hi, Teresa. Teresa just kind of moved into um, from another state to not too far away from me. So hopefully, Teresa and I are going to be able to get together. Um, yes. Cindy King is here. Hi, Cindy. Always good to have you. Um, Shirley says you don't look like your picture. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's uh, something you can do quite quite easily. You could look like your picture tomorrow if you wanted to, right? I really or you could. could. Look totally different. <laughs> I really could. I really could. <laughs> so I, I bet do. some of you are wondering um, how I even know Francesca. So let me um, bring up another picture so that you can see, and I can tell you a little bit about um, what we're going to call um, uh, Dad Ron tonight. Ron the Dad. dad. Ron, Ron the Dad. <laughs> Ron the Dad shares the same name as um, Francesca, so um, not hard to guess. Uh, that is her father. And I would say probably if we talked more about people influencing you, your dad would certainly be someone oh, yes. high on that list. So I know Ron from um, working with brother. This is actually my 20th year of being uh, associated with brother. And I met Ron many years ago. Um, he's a he's a great guy. I've always enjoyed having conversations with him. And over the years, uh, I have to say that, you know, just like you wouldn't typically when you sit down with somebody um, that has children, they're going to end up showing you. <laughs> so um, I, you know, I joked with Francesca when I first got the chance to talk to her that I have seen pictures of her for sure. No oh boy. <laughs> I, uh, oh boy. Ron's phone. <laughs> But Ron is the manager of international tech support at Brother USA. So, um, you know, the mind um, that Ron has is, you know, always amazed me. But he's uh, always been um, so kind and so gracious when I've reached out for, for any kind of help. And he really keeps things rolling and running in the background for um 
for dealers that that deal in brother machines and have to work with the with the technical solutions department. So a shout out to Ron. We're we're really um, I'm just so glad that he um, uh, was there at the most recent brother convention and we were having a conversation and somehow it led to talking about um, you, Francesca. And he started telling me about what you were doing. And I said, hey, I have to get Francesca on my show and introduce her to all of my sewing friends. And um, we want to get your story out there for sure. So, yes. So that was the beginnings of Quirky Zipper. How about the beginnings of your actual sewing life and your, your, your crafty creative life? Want to tell yeah. us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So no surprise, dad, Ron, <laughs> dad, Ron, got Ron, me. the dad, <laughs> the dad, Ron, the dad, as soon as, I mean, I've been, I've been very, very artsy my entire life. I've always had some type of brush or some type of pen in my hand since as long as I could remember. But uh, as soon as I uh, could sew, I was immediately hand sewing. He taught me how to hand sew. Um, I think the very first uh, project that I can remember doing on uh, the sewing machine was um, for a musical that I was going to see in New York City uh, around like eighth grade I started getting really into theater and like Broadway and uh, I believe it was a production of Mean Girls we were going I was going to see in the city like Mean Girls the musical and I just was so excited about it like I had all the creative juices flowing and um I made like a really cute little skirt that was like pink and it had the Mean Girls logo embroidered on it and like I had all these different design elements with uh, like things from the show. And I just, I remember going to the show and like uh, everyone was like asking me about it. And like, you know, some of like the um, actors who came out backstage after the show were like, oh, that's so amazing. And I was like, like, that's kind of how it like started. I was like, this is like, I feel the inspiration and I feel like where yeah. that comes from for me. And that's, that's where it started. <laughs> that had to be so much fun because I'm sure just about everybody here has probably had some experience with, with sewing where, you know, somebody needed something and they were able to make it for them or they needed a dress for a special occasion or, you know, some type of accessory. And we, I mean, we could do a whole show on that someday. I'll have to, oh, yeah. I'll have to invite some of my friends here just to talk about some of the things that they've done over the years, but that your story, you know, just, we really can relate to that because we've all had some experience where we've done that. And then to have, you know, the outside world appreciate it and give you, you know, the proverbial high five and, and wows, <laughs> we all just, you know, that spurs us on to create more because creativity really does require like you know it's that old thing we talk about creative juices have to flow but it's something has to be fed wouldn't you agree like you can't yes. just stick it in a closet and grab it when you think you need it it's you've got to <laughs> be a lot different if it worked that way but <laughs> yeah you just gotta keep, you know. keep um grabbing from wherever you can and whoever you can in order to, you know, to get that creativity flowing. But I, you know, that's one of the things I, I love too about uh, a gathering like this. Um, of course, we're doing a live show right now and I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for everybody that watches the replay and the chat is all up there. But I think um, when we, when we see what we all do for each other by encouraging e each other in our creativity, um, that that's really, you know, it's really special to have yes. friends like that, even if we're not sitting together, you know, physically in the same room, we can still um, cheer each other on. So yeah, yep. um, Teresa's got a comment here. I'll just pop that up real quick. She says, um, positive feedback helps a lot. And that oh, is- Oh my goodness, yes. Absolutely, absolutely true. And um, Shirley says she just retired from working as a theater costumer after 50 years. Oh, wow. Wow. Shirley, I bet you've got some great stories to tell. Wow. That's amazing. I'm going to have to reach out. That's another, another wonderful connection. Oh, my goodness. That's yeah. so cool. And um, Christy says, yay, uh, you arts. Um, her son got his master's in museum and exhibition design there. Wow. 
That's so cool. That is so amazing. See what a small world That's you exciting. never know. What a small world for real. Yep. Yes. Yep. That's so yeah, cool. Absolutely. And um, Carol says positive encouragement is vital. Absolutely. Vital. Um, Carol, you can always get positive encouragement here. I am ready to dish that out anytime you need it. <laughs> and so are the rest of our, our friends here, right? Everybody agree with that? Give me a give me a yes in the chat if you agree with that. I'd like to hear like to hear from you. No, oh, Cindy has a nice comment here. Um, she says, uh, uh, the, uh, my collections inspire her and others too, she hopes. So thank you, Cindy. I appreciate that. Cindy has inspired me by um, creating uh, jean jackets and using some of the designs that I've got and just taking them to a whole new height. And she actually just won a blue ribbon in her state fair for, for one of them. So Thumbs oh, up yes. to Cindy King, everybody, tonight. Congratulations. <laughs> That's so fun. And we're getting a lot of yeses and absolutely's. Yeah, absolutely. June says yes for sure. Oh, and, you know, here's a great comment here. Deborah um, says she loves to see younger creators. And um, me too. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Francesca, you and I, we, um, we've only had, what, one other lengthy conversation yeah. But I would have to say we we just kind of bonded like right away. It worked very we? nicely. <laughs> our energies our energies flow together very well. I will say, <laughs> and that's you know that like I said, that's another fun thing about um, being in the creative world. It's you immediately have such a camaraderie, just like we have oh, yeah. you know amongst all of our all of our friends here. So. Wow. So that, that is really interesting. Now, obviously you had a nice advantage with um, uh, Ron, the dad <laughs> Ron. being able to supply you with um, machines and, and different things like that. But yeah. um, we all know that a tool means nothing unless the creator is, is behind it and, yep. you know, has the ability to, to do something with it. So you know, whenever I have somebody on, I like to ask um, a couple questions that we we all kind of think of in the in the back of our mind. And one of them is, what would be um, one or more of your must-have notions or tools that you use to create your masterpieces? Do you have any Ooh. any ideas on that? Yeah, those are good questions. Well. <laughs> the very first one that comes into my mind is a seam ripper. I make a lot of mistakes. I think that I have this conversation with so many other people that sew. So much of sewing is unsewing. <laughs> like realizing you. That is true. You you rip back. what you sew. You rip what you, you sew. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so that's a big one. Um, I'm trying to think what else I have here. I mean, it'd be it'd be insane for me to not say the machine. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. That is very true. Very yes. true. And it yes. looks like you have it. Looks like you have a nice one there. Yes, I, this is my baby, my child. <laughs> <laughs> we all feel that way about our sewing machines, don't we? Um, some people have names for them. Do you have a name for your sewing machine? Oh my goodness, not for this one. I had a name for the uh, one that I left at home, but this one does not. I was just <laughs> curious. I was just curious because I don't so have funny. names for any of mine, but I know so many people that do. So if you'd like to tell us what your name of your sewing machine is in the chat, feel free. Oh my goodness. I would love to hear some sewing machine <laughs> names. That'd be so adorable. Oh my. Jeanette <laughs> is getting ready to do another um, design challenge. So she hopes to get enough designs done for a fabric line. Wow, Jeanette. That is really cool. Why? Like I said, we've got lots of creative people here for sure. Yes. Clovis also loves her swing ripper or, well, I don't know if it's a love relationship, but she certainly, <laughs> <laughs> it's certainly one of her, one of her tools. And yeah. um, I mean, we've got a couple questions. So I think I'm going to, I'm going to bring those up and, and get a couple questions here. So yes. first one is from Shirley. She says, did your dad get you a good deal on your machine? Yes, yes. I um it would be just insane for me to not recognize how grateful I am for uh the way that he's provided for my the way that he's really fed uh my creativity. Yeah, he he brings home all sorts of um <laughs> little little gadgets and things that he's like, "Hey, 
you should try this. You should try this. This one has this. And so yes, yes. To answer That's the question, pretty yes. neat. <laughs> and and then he knows what to do too if something um, kind of goes kind of goes wrong, which is great. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and Carol wants to know um, where you draw your inspiration from. That's a great That's, question. That is always such a good question. Um, I draw a lot of my inspiration uh, from. Well, like I mentioned earlier, theater is a big one. That's where it all, like, not all started, but, like, that's where, like, a lot of it started. That's where, like, a lot of that, you know, got going. Uh, something about seeing a show and just understanding how complex and how many people it took to build it, like, the, from choreography to set design to costume design to, you know, designing the color scheme, by designing the logos for everything, and, like, all of that understanding how much community goes into building theater like that on its own is like so much of an inspiration to me uh so i i definitely when i'm feeling a little low on the energy i tend to buy a ticket for something and you make my way out to something it's not too hard now i'm in philadelphia there's so many wonderful theaters here so I'm incredibly yeah. grateful for that but yeah that's a big one i'd say the other like these are like the two big ones in my brain uh, the other big one is honestly my childhood. There's so many small little uh, like patterns and stuffed animals and like just little things of memory that are just so important to me. And I think being able to hold on to like that joy and to like find some, you know, get a good kick out of it, get a good laugh out of it is yeah. just like just a really wonderful thing. Well, you've definitely found a way to carry on with um, with what we might consider, you know, childhood things, things that we love. And one of those um, big things uh, it has a has a cute name. We call them stuffies, right? Stuffies. Well, I bet everybody is really anxious by now to see what in the world does the quirky zipper have to offer. So let's bring up some more pictures. And we will um, talk a little bit about exactly what is on the Quirky Zipper website. So um, custom bags. Um, uh, Quirky Zipper can make your perfect dream bag a reality. Right, Francesca? Yes, absolutely. Tell us how that works. Yeah, so uh, there's a, a little like a uh, little spot on my website where you can like uh, send shoot me an email and basically people will reach out to me saying hey I'm really into you know this tv show or this type of thing or like I haven't seen a bag with these colors or this shape but uh, it's something that means a lot to me and so I'll talk to them they'll say for example right now I'm working with a client on a bag that's inspired by clowns and like clowning and that one's really exciting and so like you know they they contact me usually i'll reach out to them on instagram but like i do use email you know if for any reason they do not have instagram and um i sit down with them i uh usually i'll have them send me uh a file of pictures that like encapsulates what they're looking for um just so like we're all on the same page okay. and yeah we'll talk about uh the sizing what kind of fabric they're looking for um if there's like any particular adjustments we need to make to straps for any accessibility reasons um and yeah we just kind of go from there and i just i do a whole lot of sketching send a whole lot of sketches back and forth a whole lot of different color palettes back and forth because uh, I just really want to get into every single nook and cranny of what they're looking for. So what you're actually doing is you're taking um, stuffed animals or, you know, something along that that line. And you are creating uh, zippered carry-all bags or some some sort of, of useful bag out of them, right? Yeah. So the stuffed animals, uh, the stuffy bags are another uh, option that we have for customization. That's mostly so like... Uh, a lot of people, you know, obviously a lot of us hold on to these objects from our childhood. And there's a reason for that. They have a lot of meaning to us. They built a lot of, you know, the personality that we have now. They made us feel safe. They brought us a lot of comfort. And so uh, people send me their stuffed animals in the mail uh, or drop them off by my house if they live in Philly. <laughs> and, yeah, I make them into bags. And I return I them back to them. I think that is is just so neat that you're able to, um, you know, to to take those things and 
give them new life. So the whole idea of, you know, upcycling comes into, into all this as well. Yes, definitely. Cindy has a question. She says, how do you get around um, trade and copyright issues? Um, I'm assuming you mean specifically with like custom bags and things like that. Um, yeah, this I is would... actually, yeah, this is something I struggled with like in the beginning when I was designing my business. Cause at first this was after I had been like making my own skirts when I like would go to shows and stuff. And I started thinking like, Oh, I could sell these. Like people would really love to have like a waitress themed skirt, like the musical waitress themed skirt or like a mean girls themed skirt. Um, and it's something that it was part of the reason I ended up switching to bags in the first place. But uh, the easiest answer I can give to explain it is I'm providing the product, not the design. So exactly. it's kind of the same. Yeah, it's the same way that uh, if you're familiar with the way tattoo artists work, they're allowed to do Disney designs because they're providing the service, not design. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, and and in this case, I you know you're 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 just revamping the product. You're not copying it or reproducing it. You're just right. changing it much the same. Somebody would you know shorten a dress or or something like that. So right, right. Yeah. And Marie has asked, um, do you have your own website and what is the link? So I am putting that in the um, in the banner there. So um, I also want you to know that I will put that in the show. Um, show notes, the links so that you can um, connect directly with Francesca when the show is over. So no worries. That will be there for you for sure. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Teresa says, oh, that makes sense. And Cindy says um, she was just wondering. So, all right, I got a question here I'm going to save, but I want to go to the um, to the next picture because, you know, what, what we've shown and we've seen so far is that you're able to take um, some sort of a of a favorite item like like what you see on the screen there and revamp it and put a zipper in it put a quirky zipper in it right <laughs> <laughs> yes of course and turn it into um, something useful but you also have a whole sampling on your website of uh, what you call second chance stuffies so they're um, a combination of uh, quirky zipper purses bags and backpack. So I brought up just a, a few images. Take a look at that adorable um, sleepy sheep purse and brown bear bag and the giraffe purse. And then the lion is made up into a, a makeup bag. And I know, you know, tonight we're doing something a little different because I'm showcasing an artist and a friend who is taking things and, um, you know, crafting with them and recreating them and using it as a small business. But I wonder, you know, if I'm starting to stimulate the thoughts here of some of our friends that are out there that I would just, you know, love to encourage you. If you have a particular item that you sew and you make lots of it or it's something that you really get a lot of joy out of making, you might very well want to consider um, turning that into your own side hustle. That is certainly an option. So I know um, many of our friends here, um, you know, create all kinds of different things. And that is something that I'd like to encourage everybody to think about if that's something in your in your wheelhouse that you might want to get get into. There's just, um, you know, a lot of a lot of options for that. So um, why don't you tell us a little bit about the items that are on the screen here? Absolutely. So uh, the second chance stuffies that are listed on my website, all of them are, you know, pretty much first come first serve. Once they're there, there's not another one. Um, all of these stuffed animals are either uh, ones that have been donated to me, things that, you know, people don't really want anymore, or, if, um, or there are items that I have thrifted uh, or picked up at like garage sales and things like that. Um, and yeah, I, I clean them off. I make them look like, you know, they're fresh out of the store again and they get a new purpose. So, um, tell me then, Francesca, would they be one of a kind? Yeah, they're very, they're very special. Um, cause I, you know, I only make, I only make one of them. Like there's only one sheep. There's only one, uh, bear. Each of them are very special. And then when that item is sold, then it would be replaced with something different, correct? Yeah. 
That's correct. Okay. That makes that makes sense. I've got more pictures though. Look at those coin purses. <laughs> Oh, Aren't the coin purses. Adorable. Absolutely adorable. And then I, I have a, another picture to show, which shows the back. So I'm asking everybody out there, can you see the quirky zipper application? <laughs> <laughs> I see those zippers. And we've actually already had a, um, a great, great question. So I want to bring that one up. And that was, um, oh, it disappeared on me. Oh, okay. Well, I got a couple, couple of them. One, the one that I, um, that disappeared on me wanted to know, um, if you have any tips for putting those zippers in. That was a, that took me a while to master. So <laughs> I got a few of them. Um, one thing with zippers, especially with stuffed animals that are very fuzzy like that, um, the one gnome purse was a big struggle because he just had so much fluff. Um, I like to use a zigzag stitch over a couple of times, like over the seam, like the sides of the seam that I am putting the zipper in, just to kind of put the fur down so that it's more stable and easier to sew into. Um, the other thing is just like kind of just getting really good at hand sewing. I tried to avoid hand sewing zippers for like a while, uh, just because I was like, oh, it takes so much time. But getting fast at hand, sew hand sewing especially when you're sewing a really small zipper into something is just like so crucial and it saves you so much stress and so much stretching of fabric of whatever you're working on and yeah so those are those would be my recommendations really those are those are great tips do you have a um do you use more than one kind of uh zipper foot um to be honest not Really, I kind of just have one that's like really narrow, you know, and that tends to do the trick for me. That's good. I, I did a um, presentation recently on zipper feet and I showed four different ones and I was surprised at how many people were surprised how many there were. <laughs> but there is, um, you know, whatever, to whatever tool works for you, that's the one that you actually want to want to stick right. with for sure. Yeah. So that was the question Linda had. She wanted to know if there were tricks to, to sewing the, the zippers in. And then um, Bambi Lynn um, wanted to know, do you have stuffing in them to help keep their shape? That's a great question, Bambi Lynn. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, yeah, that was another thing that I had to tweak and play with as I was like starting to get the hang of doing this was like I was trying to keep as much of the stuffing in as possible to like help him keep his shape. Um, however, I started realizing over time that that made them like less, less functional and they, they couldn't hold as much. So uh, my rule of thumb is I, stu I keep the head stuffed, then I keep the limbs stuffed, and then all the belly space is completely empty so that you can fit as much as possible. <laughs> okay. That's, that, That's, you know, that, that makes perfect sense. Plus, they're bags, so they're going to be stuffed with stuff <laughs> yeah. that the person That's is the carrying. So it's just like if you've ever, ever bought a new purse and you take all the paper out it doesn't right. look anywhere near as pretty as it did in the store and then you right. go empty out your old purse and put everything in there and now you got a great looking purse again so yeah that makes perfect 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 sense um yeah teresa says oh that makes sense yeah <laughs> yeah let's see if i got any new questions here uh well carol has a nice um uh or ann rather ann has a really nice um comment so you want to tell us again where you're from? Um, so originally? I'm from Washington, New Jersey. Yeah, originally Washington, New Jersey. Uh, that's where my car is at the moment. So that's you know where I'm, <laughs> where I go back to. But right now I'm I'm in Philadelphia, and I have an apartment out here. So yeah. Okay. Oh, we got a question. Maybe both of us um, could answer. It's addressed Ooh. to me, but I but but. Uh, um, it's been so long since I started sewing. It's been a shorter time since you started sewing <laughs> just by nature of our age difference. Just by so, nature. Yep. Yeah. I swallow, um, wants to know, um, how do I get started with sewing? Wow. What would, what would your, um, thoughts be on that, Francesca? I, like I mentioned earlier, I got started with hand sewing. The first dress I ever sew, I ever, um, sewed was like all hand sewing, um, I mean, it's, I feel uh, it's a tough question for me to answer. I've been very lucky. You know, I've always had a machine available to me. But um, if you can either find a friend with a machine or find um, 
something small, very simple to start with. Um, and there are all sorts of good, uh, you know, tutorials on YouTube. I'm sure Joanne has a lot yeah. of good things up. <laughs> I would well. I would second the motion on 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 YouTube. If you're if you're a visual learner like that, that's that's great. Um, yes. Another recommendation that I you know we all learn differently. So if you're a visual learner, that works really well. If you learn by looking at pictures and reading words, um, I will tell you that you know the library is the old fashioned <laughs> library <laughs> is still a great resource because you can go there. And you can just take a stack of books and spread them all on the table and just keep looking until you find something that clicks with you. Because I think that my recommendation, and I'd love to hear um, our friends that are here tonight, what they would, what they would say, but you have to, you have to want to do something. You have to have a motivation to do that. So, you know, whatever that is, whether it's garments or pillows. Yeah. Um, so you find what's going to click with you and then go from there. And then I would I say, do. go ahead. Sorry. I do have one other thing I wanted to say real quick. So it just popped in my brain. Um, Pinterest is a really good place to find like really easy beginner patterns. And what's great about the Pinterest ones is most people put instructions for them. So like the easiest, like the easiest things you can start with sometimes just throwing yourself into it is the best way to do it. <laughs> that is, and, and I, that was my next piece of advice was just go for it. Yep. You know, get started. Get but, the seam um, ripper out. You just got to get into it. <laughs> And if you have a, um, a sewing store locally, um, check that out. Because if you get into a, a class, you're going to be able to um, ask a lot of questions. And you're going to be able to, um, in all likelihood, borrow a machine so you don't have to make that, that investment. Mm -hmm. So thank you for thank the you. question. That was, that was a good one. All right. Yeah. We're getting, getting some comments on other people that like to learn from Me YouTube. Too. But DS yeah. has a great question. So let's bring that up. Oh, oh well, Clovis, too. Um, what are you sipping out of? Okay. <laughs> that, is a, that is a wonderful question. This is my spaceship cup. <laughs> I can't, yeah. It's got a claw inside of it. It's from Toy Story. That's the reference. Oh, my. I didn't even know. I wasn't even paying attention. So thanks, Clovis, for <laughs> so, calling yeah, that so one out. Because <laughs> I meant to click on this one first. DS wants to know, do you block off the head and legs so the stuffing doesn't fall out? Great question, Diaz. That is a good question. I I actually don't. I mean, I make like an insert that is basically the pouch that holds everything. So the stuffing doesn't seem to uh, come out of there. So yeah, yeah. That's a that that yeah. I I you know that's some definitely um a thought there. Like okay, what how does that yeah. how does that all I mean, work? Some of some of the stuffed animals are just like that. Like the arms are separately sewn from like the rest of the body. So it just depends, but I it's, do not. Yeah. It's probably got to really be like an individual thing. Cause each one is a little bit, a little bit different. A little right? special. Yeah. <laughs> each one takes on its own life when you're, when you're done too. Well, <laughs> yes. We're really getting some really good questions in here. I want to just take a, yes. um, a second just to say thank you everyone for, for watching live. We do this, we do this live, uh, usually the fourth Monday of every month, but this month we're, we're a week early and every month I interview somebody and we just talk sewing and everybody joins in and we just, um, we all learn together and we all leave inspired, but thanks everybody for being here live. And I really thank all of you who um, are catching this on the replay as well. So it's just, it's great to have so many, so many friends here watching and I can't, can't, um, say anything without uh, you know remembering to say this but be sure to hit the like and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications because that helps a lot and um, you know I, I just want to see this um, keep going so if you can do that for me as a favor if you enjoyed the show I would appreciate that definitely all right so let's see if we got some more um, questions here we do all right Ann wants to know, do you do machine embroidery? And you could name your animals. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, it's a very good idea. Very true. You're going to see um, a name in a minute here, Ann. We've got a, we've got, she's got a new product that we're going to show. Tonight. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah, the machine that I have is um, the Anovis, uh, the Disney one. So it does both embroidery and sewing. Um, yeah, we've got a few bigger embroidery machines at home. Of course, dad's got all the 
all the toys. So, um, yes, I do. And uh, we got um, Joanna popping in here. Yes, Joanna, we are still live right now. So you you got in for for um, part of the live show. So you'll have to um, reel back if you want to watch the the beginning. But we're glad that you're here for sure. Yeah. Mm. And then Carol's got a great comment. Um, loves to learn what the younger generation of sewists and crafters enjoy. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Because, you know, depending on what world you're in, you may not have a lot of interaction with people that are, you know, um, far outside of your age category. <laughs> and, you know, we all have different tastes, though. I'm, I find that whenever I go to a sewing gathering or a sewing meeting, um, everybody's doing something different, which makes it really really fun. So we, uh, we touched on the embroidery and that actually, um, is, uh, going to show up in my next picture here that I have. So let me go ahead and, um, bring that one up on the screen. Backpacks, another bag, Backpacks. right? Yes. Yeah. So why don't you tell us about these? <laughs> yeah. So, um, the backpacks are kind of just, um, you know, I'm I'm always trying to release a new one. I'm trying I'm trying to release a new one, at the very least once a year, just like with everything going on with school. But um, you know, uh, just a couple of introductions. The one on the right is um, our Franklin the Frog bag, and he's like a flat uh, book bag kind of design, and uh, he's just a very good bag for like um, carrying a lot of books and. Um, yeah, he's a fun one. And then uh, the one on the left is a gingerbread bag that I designed for like a holiday bag last year. And, I love that uh, one. Oh, yeah. I love that one. And the design on it is so cute. <laughs> I am pretty, pretty happy with that one. The drawstring bags are nice because that pattern is uh, very easy to work with. There's no stabilizer involved and it's just a really, a, a really easy, simple pattern to, to you know, put to, to go through. So I definitely plan on releasing a lot more designs that are based off of that structure. Oh, well, it's, it's, it, they're so useful for one thing, but then oh, you yes. made them adorable, which <laughs> puts them up to new heights for sure. Yeah. Very now, easily customizable too. With definitely. Those, so. Yeah, definitely. With different trims, different embroidery. Oh, yeah. um, you can upscale it by putting like a monogram on it. Um it's, you know, that whole area is the perfect place for your favorite um, embroidery design. Definitely. Yeah. Shirley just got done making um, making one for her granddaughter. So, Oh, my gosh. How fun. You'd probably like to see a picture of that one, huh? Right. I do. <laughs> I really do. That's the first thing I thought of. <laughs> I want to see that. Uh, we got a nice comment here from um, So Francis. I want to bring that up. Um Thanks for um, sharing a talented, creative young one. Well, thank you, Francesca, for um, being willing to to be here and be my guest tonight. That makes it really, oh. really special for me. Yeah, it's such a gift. Thank you. And the frog book bag is so cute, Anne says. I agree. I agree. Now, I'm waiting for the question to roll in that I thought would be the first question on everybody's mind when they saw these backpacks. But... So far, I don't see it. So I'm, I'm going to have to ask it myself. And you know what I'm going to say. I know, right? yeah. <laughs> have you ever considered um, creating uh, patterns for these so that those of us out here yeah. um, can sew some of these great things that you've designed for ourselves and our friends yes. and people that we love? Well, since you brought it up last time we spoke, I've been thinking about it. Like, I've been thinking about how I could put the instructions together and things like that. Definitely, I, I definitely could very easily. Um, yeah. Poss possibility for the future, right? Absolutely. Definitely absolutely. a possibility for, for the future. And, you know, I have to say, I'm gonna, just going to flip back um, to some of the pictures so that everybody can see them again um, for a minute here. But um, everything on here and everything on your website, I found just so incredibly reasonably priced, um, you know, and so, you know, it's like all of us can sew, right? Pretty much everybody here can sew. I mean, if I got newbies here, that's fine too. You are absolutely welcome. But when we can sew, sometimes we feel like we have to sew. And <laughs> I'm here to tell you, I know everybody's going to agree with me. Um, you don't have to always make something yourself. It's 
really a joy to buy something that's handcrafted by somebody else as well. So if you're looking at these, um, I would highly encourage you to um, visit uh, the Quirky Zipper website. I'm going to go ahead and put it up here again and, um, you know, consider um, purchasing something special like this. You can say you've met the artist, you've met the designer, and now you have the, the, um, the item that you can um, use for yourself or gift to somebody else. So um, definitely check that out when you um, go visit Francesca's website because um, there's just lots of great options there. But yeah, um, Shirley says you would sell a lot. Kids love animal bags. So boy, you just change the face on that and a few different things and you got something new and different, right? Yeah. Yes. What's what's really fun. I didn't expect this at all. What's really fun. I've been getting a lot of uh, grandparents sending me their kids old stuffed animals to give to the grandkids for them to have as bags. That's so exciting to me. I think oh. that's adorable. <laughs> but I started realizing that was the pattern. I thought it was the most adorable thing ever. <laughs> So cute. And, and like I said, I mean, that is something that you're you're turning something that, OK, we we're going to consider it a toy. And actually, I brought a few of my favorites. Anybody want to see a few of my favorites? Oh, yes. It's time. <laughs> I got it's some time. fun ones here. I don't know if anybody else has these because these are kind of different. But Woo! I've kind of always enjoyed um, um, purchasing things that were related to something commercially. So like I have a. I have a Pillsbury Doughboy. Um, dough I have boys. a Snuggle Bear from uh, from the Fabric Softener line. But my two favorites oh. are from Canned Beans, if you can believe it. <laughs> I have Mr. Kid Bean. I'll bring him. Up. I'll bring, it, bring us up a little bit bigger so everybody can see my Mr. Kid Bean. Oh yeah, they got to see him up close. Miss Chickpea. Chickpea. And they are just the best of friends. <laughs> and they would be a perfect size for one of your things that that you um, create out of those custom. But so we'll have to we'll have to think about that. And just yeah, like the little the little beanie bags. Um, those would make great little. Um, you know, oh my! What a, what a wonderful gift to give to somebody to have have something like that. So <laughs> I thought that would be fun for everybody to see my favorite, my favorite stuffies. <laughs> Yes. We but we do have pee. one more that you um uh you shared with me and this I think is your newest latest yes. creation. So let me bring that one up for everybody to see. Um and this one has a name. So we said before, oh you're going to hear a name here. Um you've named um him her it <laughs> Hartley. <laughs> <laughs> yes a this charismatic is little dude equipped to hold all your goods with two big pockets inside and a chapstick pocket i think you have hartley behind you don't you i do well that's a oh i keep forgetting which side i'm pointing to because it's back <laughs> that happens all the time ignore <laughs> me please yes that is a prototype of him but i have the the brand new the, the most i'm gonna bring right you here. up i'm gonna bring yes. you up solo here Yes, he is here. This is him. He's a big Franny Pack. He's gone through so many uh, prototypes and tests. Like I said, Seam Ripper, I make a lot of mistakes. But yeah, this is him. He's got a big pocket. He's got these two pockets on the inside here. And uh, along the side here, there's also a little pocket to hold a chapstick. So just lots of compartments, lots of good things. Strap is adjustable. All of the straps and all my bags are adjustable. So that I think is, that is, yeah. That's a that's a really key point. But he is just I I I can't think of words um, big enough to describe him. He is just super 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 special. Really really yes. cute. And I'd like to see some um, uh, yes please in the chat if you would um find yourself if you had a pattern making the hartley dude <laughs> <laughs> and ann wants to know um what about the stitches on his face oh yes so um how did you do that stitching, yeah so i have a um like a piece of paper that i uh cut out like the design like i cut out 
all these bits on his face okay. and like, like a these template? little bits. Yeah, template. Yeah. Okay. And um, I when I cut out this heart piece, I place it over top, and I use chalk to like uh, you know, draw it all on. And I actually like sew it right on here. Like it's not an embroidery set pattern. Like I kind of just go in and I sew it all while it's on the stabilizer. And yeah, it took me a long time to figure it out. I'm glad that one's not up any closer because <laughs> it is a mess. <laughs> it took me a long time to, it, it took me a little while to get him looking as sharp as he does now. But I'm very, very proud of him. So incredibly proud. Oh, I, 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 I just think he's absolutely wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. So then none of that's yeah, done free motion. That's actually done with the feed dogs up on the machine and you're just yes. um, creating those, those stitches. Yeah. On some of the like, you know, tighter curves and stuff, I, you know, put the feed dogs down, but uh, for the most part, yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know if you um, saw the comments pop up, but we got a lot of yes, please. Yes. Love it. Sure would. Um, lots of people would, um, would um, really enjoy being able to make some of these themselves too. So not that we're trying to pressure you at all or anything. <laughs> <laughs> this is my sign. I've and then it. Anne says you need a brother scan and cut. I have a feeling you probably have one. I've got one. <laughs> 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 not, not here in my little studio apartment, but at home. Yes, I sure do. Love, love the scan and cut. Love it so much. And then Shirley thinks you ought to have a, a machine with design center in it. So <laughs> no, yes, yes. That's probably a someday thing for sure. And then um, Sharon says she would love the patterns too. And yeah. Ann says you should be so proud. Yeah. I've got to start definitely. working on it. Oh, thank you. I've got to start working on that. then. <laughs> definitely. Oh, I just, you know, I love everything that you've done. Um, let me bring up Hartley again, just really quick here. So everybody can, can see him. <laughs> that is just really very, very, very special, very unique. And I love the way you designed it with all of the, um, you know, all of the inner working so that it opens up properly. That had to be something that took um, quite a bit of thought um, to do. Well, sure. Yeah. Uh, I'll be honest, a little bit less thought and planning a lot more trial and error <laughs> as i mentioned multiple times <laughs> that's the only way i know how to work not and a bad way it's good i but. bet a lot of our friends can relate to that too because it's um i don't know how many times you know you do something but then if you don't do it for a while especially you find yourself doing a lot of the pinning doing a lot of the taping doing a lot of whatever whatever it takes to um you know put that together so that you can uh see how it's going to work before you do it i go through all kinds of crazy shenanigans when I'm um, designing something from scratch and I play with paper and I play with pattern transfer cloth and do all kinds of things before I actually cut into the good stuff um, yep. before, you know, before I um, start doing that. So yeah, Christy, I agree. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we are getting close to the end of, of the show, uh, Francesca, but I, I always like to ask, yeah, I went by too fast, didn't it? It really did, actually. Yeah. Um, I always like to ask an, another question of creatives. Um, you know, we're always looking for um, tips to be more more productive in our in our sewing space. Um, and you know, for some of us, that means organizing better. Um, for some of us, that just means you know, kind of you know, creating a layout that that works good for us. But and maybe maybe you don't even have to have all of that all lined up nice and pretty in order to work. But I'm I'm curious because we're seeing how creative you are. Um, do you have a you know kind of a certain plan that you follow, or are there certain things that you think have to be in place for you to be able to to do the things that you do? Yes. Uh, well, I sound like a broken record now, but I'm a very visual learner, so I learn a lot by trial and error. Uh, when I go into making a new bag, I'll start by kind of, uh, I have I, on my iPad, I have Procreate. It's a really good drawing app if you're like really into drawing. But um, it's great because it has different, uh, you can add different layers to draw on. So uh, I'll start with doing like on each layer, I'll draw out each side. Like for Hartley, <laughs> for Hartley, like I drew out his face and what I wanted that to look like. And then I drew out like the three dimensions, like how it would all fit together, like all on different layers. Um, I start with that. Uh, and then I start working with like some 
dimensions that I think might work. And the very first like construction of the bag that I do is actually out of paper. I'll uh, cut out the pieces on like paper, usually in like smaller than what it will actually end up being, just to see if it'll all actually fit together and uh, work the way that I need it to. And that's something that I need to see happen. And I can't really guess on like, it's something I have to play around with and get just right. And then once I do have it right, I like to write out. I use a lot of sticky notes. I'm a very, very visual person. I write down on like each individual sticky notes. I'll put each step. And then if there's something that needs to go before this, like I'm like looking at it and I'm realizing, oh, the zipper needs to go in before I sew in the pockets. And I just move that step over. Like I just I use a lot of sticky notes. I move things around. Yeah. Excellent. And then that's, that's yeah. how I do it. Yeah. Oh, I'm a, I, I have so many sticky notes all over the place right now. I can't even like, I'd have to pull from all different places to show them to you. So yeah, we, we can, got that we cannot turn the too. camera around. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, well, we're getting um a few um last minute questions. So I'm going to pull them Lovely. up. And one of them is from So Francie. She wants to know how you spell your nickname. Yeah. So that is a good one. Thank you for that. Um, I spell it C-E-S-S-I-E. -S 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 That's because my name is spelled like F-R-A-N-C-E-S-C-A. -S so I spell it like that. Okie dokie. C-E-S-S-I-E. -S -S <laughs> All right. Let me see what some of the other ones that snuck in here. Um, let's see. Um, is the backpack only for children? How much does it hold? Great question, Dolly. That is a really good question. So I'm working on um, making child size versions of each of the bags that I sell. That's something that I've uh, been thinking about for a little while and slowly working on. Uh, most of the time people, like when they want a kid's size version of something, they just reach out to me and I make it like as, as though it's a custom order. Um, but the frog bag and like this guy, they're designed for like adult sizing. Like the, the strap goes up to about 40 inches in uh like full diameter. Um, so they're actually for adults, <laughs> the child at heart, I like to say. Yeah. Well, I, I you know, I, I kind of thought that because, you know, I knew what your, your whole um, philosophy was there was to, you know, keep that, keep that child at heart feeling um, even when you are all grown up. So <laughs> yes, <laughs> that yes. is good. That is definitely good. And Anne's yes, loving is. this. Um, she also Yay. has a question for you. Um, what's your actual major? So my age, my, whoa, English, sometimes words, I'm, I'm all tongue twisted now. Too. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> You've given me the tongue twisties. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> how dare you? Uh, my major is actually in acting and I plan on going into uh, immersive theater. So things like Disney World, haunted houses, anywhere where you're interacting with the audience. That's what I do. Acting major. <laughs> okay. And um, June says, such a great show. Francesca, you are an inspiration for sure. Keep creating. So love, love, love. love. <laughs> that is great. And Bambi Lynn says, um, she's so happy you're doing so well. Keep it up. More encouragement, more kudos here. Um, and thanks for all the, uh, the guests. Um, thank you, Bambi Lynn, for watching. I appreciate it so very much. <laughs> um, I love um, talking sewing, as do uh, uh, all of us here. It's um, a subject that we never get tired of. We just, um, there's always more, always more to talk about, for sure. <laughs> there's always more. That's a good, that's a really good name, too, Bambi Lynn. I love that. <laughs> always more sewing fun and always um so many great uh you know stories going on in the in the chat here too so that is so neat and christy says um keep it up patty says awesome show very talented young lady so good to see well oh, i can't tell you, you um just how pleased i am that we were able to make a connection and for everybody to be here tonight and um, and contribute with your, your questions and your thoughts. And uh, I just, um, I want to thank you, Francesca, for being such thank a wonderful, so wonderful guest. We will definitely keep in touch and um, hopefully in the near future, we can catch up again and um, 
see what you have going on. Okay. Oh, be lovely. Thank you so much for having me. It's been an absolute blessing. This has been such a wonderful experience and everyone in the chat has been so, so sweet. So thank you, Joanne, for inviting me on. It's really uh, a blessing. Thank you. Thank you for being here. You take care. All the kisses. <laughs> we'll see you again soon, I hope. So everyone here, I just want to thank you for, um, for watching, for sticking with the show. And um, uh, if you definitely want to get in touch with uh, Francesca, you will find a link to her website in the show notes as soon as the, the show is over. And if you're watching this on the replay, you can um, check all that out too. So uh, thank you, everyone. I wish you uh, the rest of your week is a good one. I hope it's a good one for you. And until we uh, meet again, I wish you a world full of pretty stitches. Happy sewing. Bye-bye. <laughs>